Hello guys and welcome to this very big video today and here we are going to be taking a look at Colorado State University's Atlantic Hurricane Season forecast for the year 2022 and honestly these are the biggest numbers we've seen them post so far with their first official outlook in April. The, their uh, biggest name storm count was last year at 17. This year we're looking at 19. So, you know, my predictions for 18 to 21 named storms might be a little bit low if uh, these numbers come to fruition. As you can see here, the average here is 14.4 named storms annually. But as you guys know, the last seven or so years, we've had, what, 16 to 30 named storms between those periods? Like, you know, in my honest opinion, I think they should start going with five-year averages instead of 10-year averages because the last six or seven years have been so tremendously active that, you know, maybe doing it 10 years updates may not, you know, work much anymore. But as you guys can see, name storms are 19. Name storm days, we're looking at an average of 69.4. What they're talking, what they're showing here is we're gonna, we could have ninety, you know, name storm days. Hurricanes, the average is seven point two, and they're forecasting nine. Hurricane days, the average is twenty seven. They're looking at thirty five days for uh, hurricanes. The major hurricanes, the average is three point two. We're looking at four hurricanes, give or take, you know, one or two. You know, who knows. Major hurricane days is average is 7.4, and they're looking at 9. Now, here's where things get a little bit interesting. Because when you talk about accumulated cyclone energy, you know, we're talking about how much in, uh, energy these storms put out. And, uh, you know, on average, that's 123. But they forecast 160 ace, which is pretty, which is on the very low end of hyperactive activity. So... We could be looking at a hyperactive year ahead if these numbers come out to fruition here. So we're just going to have to see how it all pans out. So here are the probabilities for at least one major hurricane that is probably going to uh, going to affect the, uh, the United States coastline. The entire continental U.S. is at a 71%, which is the average is about 52%. So it's up about 19% than what it is normally as uh, we see, you know, what, you know, coastline sees a major hurricane or not. The U.S. East Coast, including the peninsula of Florida, is at 47%. The average is about 31 And the Gulf Coast from Florida Panhandle westward to Brownsville is 46%. The average is about 30 So we're talking, you know, We've got a good chance of seeing a major impact the United States this year. So now we're going to go, we're going to go down here to some other averages here. No, that's not what we want. It's a little bit farther down here. So we are going to be taking a look. Here is what the European, you know, forecast. So yeah, I, you guys already know the averages, right? These are these little brackets right here. So what the European is wanting is 17.9 named storms, 93.5 named storm days, 9.7 hurricanes, 40.1 hurricane days, and major hurricanes, 4.7 days with those, or 4.7 major hurricanes, my bad, with uh, the days of those being 12.1 days, and we're looking at an accumulated cyclone energy index of 180, which is definitely in a hyperactive territory here. So and we're going to see how that pans out. So now we're going to take a look at the UK Mets office 22, 2022 Atlantic hurricane season forecast. And what they're looking for is 17 named storms, 87.6 named storm days, 9.1 hurricanes, 36.9 hurricane days, 4.3 majors, and 11 
days of majors, and they have a hyperactive ace too of 166. So so far, we're we're looking at a hyperactive season here. But you know, even if it's on the low end of hyperactivity, so you know, we're gonna see how this all pans out. Now, JMA here. This is the biggest forecast. <laughs> like you can you can see what what it is right here. We're looking at 21 name storms, 114.9 name storm days, 11.9 hurricanes, 51.8 hurricane days, six majors, 16.3 major hurricane days, and then 231 ace. Like, huh? That's just that's just ridiculous. We're gonna have to see how that pans out going forward. So, here is. The uh, average of everything that got added up here, including the analog uh, scheme, which is 16 name storms, 77.3 name storm days, 8.2 hurricanes, 32.3 hurricane days, 4.4 major hurricanes, 8.7 major hurricane days, and a ace of 137. So they don't have quite an hyperactive season here, but... Uh, it's, it's it's on the mid mid side of above average, so to speak. You know, here's a five five scheme average. You know, seventeen point eight, ninety two point three for days for name storms. Nine point six hurricanes. Thirty nine point seven, you know, hurricane days. Four point eight major hurricanes. Major hurricane days eleven point eight and one hundred and seventy six ace. So you adjust all of those final forecasts and you get the uh, average of what the uh, of what the uh, Colorado State University wants out of this season. So we're looking at a pretty decent, very active season to come here. Now, Colorado State University's next next forecast doesn't come out until June 2nd, so we're going to have to wait about two months to see if they readjust these numbers to be lower or higher than uh, what they have it now. So with that being said, that is the look at the Colorado State University's forecast along with the European, you know, UK Met and at JMA, plus its statistical schemes. So we took, we took a lot a look a lot at a lot of stuff today. So now what we're gonna do we're gonna trans in, transition into you know we're the sea surface temperatures here, and the sea surface temperatures play a big role in what the season does, you know later on. So you know you get some of these you get storms here in these warm you know Caribbean you know Western Atlantic waters, and then you know they tend to they they tend to uh, grow into hurricanes so you know that's why we got nearly 10 hurricanes we got to wor worry about this year so as you can see from the last time we looked at these sea surface temperatures you know these these 27s were not there they weren't hardly there near florida in the florida straits but now as you can see these 27s are starting to creep in here now so the east coast, most of the east coast of Florida, the Florida Keys, and parts of southwest Florida is prime for hurricane development if we had convection in the area and low wind shear. So, you know, obviously we're not seeing that right now, but, you know, as we head, you know, more throughout May, June, July, we're going to start seeing that wind shear really calm down. And that's what's going to cause these systems. It's going to, it's a, one of the helping key factors to uh, form these systems. As long as well as, the, as these warm sea surface temperatures that we have here, so you can see that these 27s are starting to evade more north here as we head out through time. They're now reaching parts of the central Gulf of Mexico now, and this and this warm tongue has been here from for months now, you know, because of the warm warm loop currents that are in these areas. You see that some of these uh, these shelf waters are starting to warm up. Now, too, we got looking at 20, 21 degrees Celsius, obviously not enough to, you know, support the tropical system, but they're starting to warm up nicely. In some areas, in some areas, it's 22 degrees Celsius. You know, we got 27s and 28s, 
you know, here in some of the parts of the Caribbean, 26s, 27s in the Western MDR. So these are slowly but surely moving their way up north. So we'll have to see how that all pans out later on. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the whole, you know, wide Atlantic tropical areas here. And you can see that these 26s are definitely above the 10 north line in some areas here. You know, obviously there's, there's they need more time because this this body of water is so much deeper than say, you know, Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico. That's going to take a while for these waters to warm up. So, you know, obviously I've been saying this with a lot of, a lot of times in my videos that because of this, uh, the sun angle is starting to get a little bit higher. These, these sea surface temperatures should start to warm up pretty nicely here in the next month or two as we head closer to the hurricane season. And you can see that we got 26s and 27s here pretty easily. We got some 28s here in the uh, equatorial Pacific. We need to see how much these cool down over the next couple of months because you know if we get if we get in the Atlantic El Nino that tends to push the Etsy south and then go right into South America which obviously is a good thing but if we get in the Atlantic La Nina that Etsy will come up north and now give us a better shot of getting hit with something unfortunately so if we get a neutral that's about in the middle so with that being said now we're going to take a look at the 15 day sea surface temperature changes here and you can see that parts of the caribbean has cooled down a little bit but mostly in the neutral category saying like saying average so to speak we've got some cooler anomalies here in the gulf of mexico and some uh, warm anomalies too so it's a mixed bag there but what is really telling here is some of the subtropics is cooling down here in the last 15 days or so and that's, that's kind of a trend we need to look out for because if this becomes all blue, well, obviously it's not all going to become blue because this subtropics is pretty warm right now. But if the, most of this was blue and all of this was red, this would be a hyperactive season in ACE. And right now, you can see the reds that are starting to creep up here in the 15-day change in the MDR. And we you guys just looked at the forecast for, for like four different you know agencies – and they showed a hyperactive season. So, so right now, the at least the 15-day SSTs changes is running with that idea at the moment. Because as you can see, you know some of the MDR region is starting to warm up a little bit here in the past 15 days or so. So we're gonna have to see how that all you know pans out through the next couple of months as we head closer to the hurricane season. All right, so now here we are. This is our last stop for today. We're looking at the Enzo 3.4 region, and you can see the ups and downs in the valleys that I went through over the last couple months. And then right here, as we get to late February, it takes a big dip down into moderate La Nina territory. And it's been pretty much, you know, at moderate to weak La Nina the whole time. You know, and then we had an up up trend down trend up trend and now we're gonna go off another massive cliff here it looks like right now we're at a value of negative 1.010 so now we're pretty much back at the moderate la nina territory here for the nino 3.4 region so what that's gonna do is that's gonna cause sinking air and shear in the eastern pacific and that's gonna cause some uh rising in less shear in the Caribbean and the Western MDR region. And that's when it's going to cause these storms to thrive. And that's why you see numbers like 19, 9, and 4 on the Colorado State University's, you know, forecast for this year because, you know, this La Nina is going to help, you know, prime the environment for these storms to form as we head, you know, farther out into, you know, the hurricane season and beyond. So with that being said, you know, just be prepared for a pretty, you know, pretty active to hyperactive season this year. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we're still early in the game. No need to panic or anything like that. Just make sure you're prepared. That's that's all any of us, you know, weather enthusiasts tell you guys with stuff like this is to always be prepared. Don't don't panic. 
We're still two months away from the hurricane season. You got plenty of time to get your stuff ready in uh, in case that your area gets affected by a tropical cyclone. And as they say, it only takes one to really destroy a life. And you know that motto is going to stand for years to come because you know that's just how it is. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. A little bit later on, you know, this evening, I'm going to have an update video on Tropical Depression 2W that is in the Western Pacific. But until then, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.